What's going on, everybody? And I hope you're enjoying your Monday afternoon so far. This is NYG Jeffy T85 here, and um, I'm going to talk about the New York Mets and uh, about their game, the first half of a doubleheader that they played today due to the team being rained out the first uh, couple of games due to inclement weather. And today, the uh, New York Mets played the first of their doubleheader. And <laughs> first off, before I get to the game, the Mets might have just gotten a little bit of a uh, Good news surrounding one of their starting pitchers who's been out to injury, and that, of course, has been Carlos Carrasco, who has been out for the past couple of weeks due to some inflammation in his shoulder, or in his elbow. He now looks like he might be on his way back as soon as next Monday, which is a positive sign to hear about Carrasco. Even though he's been not good so far at the beginning of the season, the Mets could definitely use his... Uh, they definitely could use him back in the rotation. And it sounds like with him, along with Justin Verlander and Max Scherzer, who could both be at on their way back as well, the Mets finally might start be might be able to start getting healthy by sometime in May, which is a very positive sign because this Mets pitching staff has been awful. So it's positive news to hear about Carlos Carrasco, even though he has struggled mightily at the beginning of the season. <laughs> Now in terms of today's game. Well, the Mets offense was not the problem today. The Mets offense was able to generate 11, they were able to generate seven hits or nine hits, seven runs overall. They got contributions up and down the roster, including home runs by Eduardo Escobar, Pete Alonso, and Brett Beatty. They also got key RBIs, a, third, a triple by Brandon Nimmo. They had multiple guys on the team be able to have contributions on offense. But once again, Denny Reyes, who had to take over as the pitcher of the first game, he was not good. And then a couple of guys in the bullpen, John Curtis and especially Jeff Brigham, couldn't get the job done. And the Mets end up falling in the first game of the doubleheader by the final score of 9-8. to eight. <laughs> Reyes... Gave only pitched in one er, one inning overall, and he gave up five earned runs, including two home runs by the Braves today. One by Murphy and one by Acuna Jr. in the first and in the second inning. The bullpen did not serve that much better. John Curtis pretty much gave up an earned run as well. Tommy Hunter and Nagostic or Nagosek. Did a good job. They did a decent job out of the bullpen. But for the most part, Reyes was blown up in the game. And then Brigham gave up a big, big <clears throat> home run to the second home run by Sean, Ra Sean Ryan Murphy in the bottom of the eighth. Or the top of the eighth inning. It's top of the seventh. He gave up a home run in the top of the seventh inning. And the Mets tried to get back into it. I mean, they got... Hits all up and down the lineup. Alonzo, or Lindor had a big single in the bottom of the first inning that drove in Brandon Nimmo and was able to get Mar Starling Marte to third. Mets also got home runs in the third inning by Pete Alonzo, who hit a three-run home run to, to tie down the score to 5-3. to three. Brett Beatty was able to hit a home run to make it 6-4. to four, or, uh, Yeah, 6-4. to four. <laughs> And then... Eduardo Escobar and Daniel Vogelback. Vogelback got a big grounders fielder's choice, but it was an error by the, by the pitcher on the Atlanta Braves in that inning, Anderson, which allowed the Mets to score Francisco Lindor and then Pete Alonso scored on a throwing error. So the Mets were able to get two, uh, two runs on errors by the Atlanta Braves, and that cut the lead down to 9-7, to seven, and then Eduardo Escobar homered in the bottom of the ninth inning against A.J. Minter, which cut the lead down to 9-8. to eight. But Brett Beatty couldn't get the job done in the end. He ended up grounding out in the bottom. Of, he ended up getting out on the bottom of the ninth, and the New York Mets fall in this game by the final score of 9-8. to eight. Braves now raise their record to 19-9 and tw and nine on the season, and the Mets fall to 15-13. So the Mets have already fallen in the first two games of this series. 
and they already getting they're getting ready for the second half of their doubleheader, which should be starting in a matter of moments. Which we'll see Charlie Morton on the mound, who is have a three three and two record and two seven six ERA right now for the Atlanta Braves. In twenty nine and third innings, he has given up twenty nine hits, twenty six strikeouts. He has twelve walks and he's given up three home runs. And he'll be going up against Tyler McGill, who is three and one on the season and has pitched to a three point nine six ERA while. Giving up a one point with having a one point four eight whip, giving up twenty five hits, nineteen he has nineteen strikeouts with twelve walks and he's given up fifteen home runs in twenty five innings so far this season. The Mets need McGill to be able to go out there and produce at a high level. And then you look at the Mets lineup in this game overall. Like I mentioned, the Mets were able to muster nine hits in this game overall. You had Brandon Nimmo, Starling Marte, Francisco Lindor. Pete Alonso had a solid game. Although we only had one hit, he scored two runs on the game. And he was able to get that big three-run home run in the bottom of the third inning. Which is exactly what the New York Mets needed. <laughs> Brett Beatty, he's had a couple of hits in this game overall. Including that home run that happened in the bottom of the sixth inning. And he's now hitting uh, 343 on the season. So Beatty has come up and really done a solid job overall for the New York Mets. Escobar is a pitch hitter. Got that big home run in the bottom of the ninth to cut it to 9-8. Uh, to eight. But the pitching is what failed him again. The bullpen and the starting pitching continue to be the Achilles heel of this team. Even when they go out there and score 8 hit, get 8 runs scored on 9 hits, this team still can't do enough pitching wise to get this team over the over the hump and they badly need Carrasco back as bad as he's pitched he's still better than the guys they're trotting out there they need Max Scherzer back they need Justin Verlander to get going and get get back on the mound and pitch Kodai Senga has got to turn it around and they definitely need they need Jose Quintana back too this match pitching staff and bullpen the bullpen is starting to get overworked a little bit and it's starting to hurt this team and the starting pitching staff is an absolute disaster right now for this New York Mets team. And they badly, badly need to turn it around. Hopefully they can do it and Tyler McGill can go out there and have an impressive sh performance today against the Atlanta Braves. We'll have to wait and see what's going to happen. Mets lose this first half of the doubleheader against the Atlanta Braves. 9-8. to Braves are 19-9. Mets are now 15-13, and 13, and they'll get ready for the second half of this doubleheader, which is going to start at 440 this evening at City Field, which is going to have Charlie Morton against Tyler McGill on the mound. Hit that like button if you haven't already, and give a sub to NYG Jeffy T85. More news updates, chatter, and game recaps surrounding the New York Mets. Turn on the bell for notifications of the next video or short dropping on the channel surrounding the New York Mets. And you guys let me know in the comment section what you thought about today's New York Mets loss in the first half of their doubleheader against the Atlanta Braves, 9-8, and your State of the Mets as they get ready for the second half of their doubleheader in just about a half an hour from now. <laughs> Charlie Morton for the Braves, Tyler McGill for the Mets, the starting pitchers for the Game 2 of this doubleheader today at City Field. Thank you very much, everybody. Have a great rest of your Monday. Take it easy, and let's go New York Mets. As always, all you got to do is you got to believe in those boys from Queens.